All right, full tour of a Malaysian supermarket here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And first things first, free self-serve kombucha right at the front. We got rose, passion fruit, and calamansi, which is like a small lime. This is a, this is a good welcome to a grocery store. Come on, free kombucha. Wow. Good or not? I like it. It's a little bit like vinegar. But I like it, and it's good for you. <laughs> good. Okay, let's uh, let's shop, and I think we'll start with the fruit and vegetable section. Now, in terms of unique fruit and vegetables here in Malaysia, there are a lot. This one is called sapadilla. It looks a little bit like a kiwi almost. <laughs> yes. Uh, but let me tell you something, guys. It tastes like cinnamon. Yes. It's unbelievable. It's, it's the most unique tasting thing up there with lucuma in Peru. Where it has that amazing, unique flavor. Uh, looking at about eight ringgit a pack. Cinnamon flavored fruit, must try in Malaysia, sapadilla. Now another popular fruit here is called pomelo. I'm gonna go out and say it and lose all of our Malaysian viewers, but super overrated. No, I love it. Inside a pomelo, first of all, there's like an inch of fluff. So the actual fruit is way smaller True. than this. And it's like a melon that is Kind of sort like of like a, a grapefruit. Like a giant grapefruit. Sort of like a grapefruit, but not nearly as flavorful as a grapefruit. It's white instead of that pink and red. It's refreshing. Listen, guys, I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. I'm on team grapefruit over team pomelo. But, 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 uh, pomelo is still good. I love pomelo. Mm, it's okay. Oh, oh, something new. Uh, seng, seng kwang. It's not potato. It almost looks it's like a pumpkin. It almost looks like a gigantic radish. Or like a yes. gigantic Actually he, you you're is it right? spot on. The taste is kinda like radish. It's white inside and it's very watery and almost has no flavor. It's heavy, I tell you that much. Yes. <laughs> Something new. Five ring and a kilo for Senkwang. So in terms of tropical fruit, there's definitely guava, passion fruit, dragon fruit, all of the usual suspects. But one thing I really wanted to show you guys is this. It's called bitter gourd. I guess it's a veggie, not a fruit. Yes. But Malaysian people will tell you that this thing cures everything. <laughs> this is good for blood pressure, diabetes. diabetes. If you got a broken foot, you eat this, you're probably jog tomorrow. This True. is like magic fruit, uh, veggie, I should say. And uh, quite good and quite affordable. Yes. Very, very bitter. I like it. Come on, guys. Steve thinks this is cheese oh come on gosh. it's not cheese steve well ivana said hey see right beside the bitter gourd is your favorite and i go oh is that cheese <laughs> oh tofu <laughs> tofu uh, oh, this aisle. a huge section of tofu even this one which i mean who I is like eating a tofu in a squeeze tube I'm gonna buy oh that's not oh, you're buying one yes mix it with eggs like an omelet eggs, oh, eggs. So good. not a fan guys and not cheese. a fan but a good sized section of tofu what's this ivana Chinchao, chinchao, it's from uh, leaves, uh, like agar, like um, jelly. Oh, so this is like a sauce? No, jelly, like a uh, agar. Jelly. Okay. Jelly, but uh, it's from leaf. Two ringgit for some leaf jelly. Yeah, it's good too. I like. It's also good, she says. Okay. Uh, fish cake. Oof. This is not my and favorite section. Also, to your be favorite too. <laughs> oh my gosh, sambal legend. So guys, let's talk about this. Uh, sambal is spicy sauce. A lot of countries use hot sauce. Uh, sambal blechen is spicy sauce from chilies with fermented anchovy. Or anchovy. fermented shrimp. Oh, shrimp. I can't Some remember. sort of fermented fish product. Yeah. And so it comes out like a punch to your mouth. It's spicy, which is good. But it's like fish flavor. It's very powerful. It's in almost every Malaysian dish. Yes. I wouldn't say everyone, but a lot of them. Yeah. And I will say this. There's a pretty impressive apple selection here ranging from about three to four ringgit per apple, except for Apple Envy, 14 ringgit an apple. Wow. I don't know what's so special about this one. It says it's from New Zealand and it's grade one, but that's got to be the most expensive apple I've ever seen. Maybe it's the most delicious one. Maybe too. it's the most delicious. Maybe it's a meal replacement. It is pretty big. Maybe you just have one of those for lunch and that's your, uh, that's your meal. You're on a diet. <laughs> Oh, 
Holy jumping, step aside apples. We got 60 ringgit per kilo for grapes. This is gonna be the most uh, expensive item in the, in the fruit section. Tell you what, we're not eating grapes in Malaysia. I tell you what, no grapes for me. I'm trying to quit <laughs> anyway. Oh, but you know why? It's because those grapes were imported from USA. Here we got the Chinese grapes, 16 a pack. So you're looking at a quarter of the price for the Chinese grapes versus the USA grapes. Not to mention, the Chinese ones look pretty good. It's so plump and shiny. I mean, shiny. it almost looks too good to be true. This might be off right. of a factory line or something. It looks so perfect, no? Yes. They're all the same. Let's try one. Huh, okay. Yeah, the import tax is real. Here's broccoli from Australia, 28 ringgit per kilo. And here's broccoli from China, four ringgit a unit. So we have to figure out how many units in a kilo, but I'm assuming that the four ringgit is much cheaper. Something new, cauliflower rice. Oh. Healthy. Cauliflower rice, the ideal rice substitute. Okay, something new. Wow, guys, 175 ringgit for five peaches because they're Japanese with the fancy packaging. Wow, <laughs> import tax. <laughs> So I tell you what, if you ever watch our videos in Malaysia, you'll see the word Botak at least five times in the comment section. And it's because Botak means bald. So here we have Kalapa Botak. These are bald coconuts. They've been uh, cut up for you and the meat on the top is exposed. I feel like you could just poke a straw inside the top and just drink it. Yeah, I think so. That's a, that's a good preparation for uh, coconut. And it's about uh, six and a half ring at a piece. Bald coconuts. <laughs> So all in all, the fruit and veg section seems to have everything you want in terms of the tropical stuff that's more local or nearby countries, including the imported stuff from the States. Right. But the imported stuff, you got to pay a lot for. <laughs> yes. I really can't imagine who is buying those 60 ringgit grapes. Oh, so expensive. Sort of unbelievable. <laughs> and oh, check it out. They have a full cheese counter. Something wow, nice. Fancy. So it's sort of surprising to see so much cheese here in Malaysia. And it actually looks like artisanal, uh, good quality cheese. Because in Malaysian food, there's not too much cheese in the recipes, but it's available here from Spain, imported, even Swiss and Holland cheese, something new. And then right by the cheese counter, you've got the seafood counter and the meat counter. You can hear the saw from the meat counter. So many sounds like they're cutting through some bones or something. But first things first, let's check out the seafood counter. Looks very fresh. Something about the fish head still scares me <laughs> so anyway let's do beef and chicken does this scare you? chicken feet not scary anymore actually very tasty Two and it's 289 ring it what's the chicken breast uh, 11 ring it for looks like three pieces it says about a half kilo of chicken yeah. okay affordable now in terms of beef almost everything here is Australian and I guess the price is not too bad here's 20 ring it for 250 grams of rump steak sort of funny that the price of the beef from australia sort of affordable whereas the veggies from australia were like import tax like crazy uh something interesting and it's so funny that the word for soy sauce in malay and same with indonesian is k-i-c-a-p pronounced as kicap so in Canada and in North America, the number one sauce is ketchup. And over here, it's soy sauce, which coincidentally almost sounds the same as ketchup. So as you can imagine, tons of soy sauce section and then a little small ketchup and only a few bottles of mustard and mayonnaise, mostly soy sauce or hoisin sauce. These black bottles seem to be the most common ones. Oh, oh look at that, guys. That's your uh, new and improved avocado mayonnaise. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a price below it, but uh, something new for me, avocado what? mayonnaise. This is the inside. This is foie gras de oi, which I don't know what that is, but it's 230 ringgit and it's this big. I mean, I, can, pate, I, I could never see a point in my life where I spent 230 ringgit on something of this size, ever. For food, I mean. Like, this is, this is a very... It's a delicacy. <laughs> it's a delicacy. Uh, not, obviously not Malaysian, but here it is available in KL. <laughs> and of course, a pretty darn big section. One, two, and even three bays of these packets, which you'll mix, I guess, with water or something, and they will make sauce. 
for food. So this is a spicy stir fry sauce. We've got asamparas sauce, ikan cuckoo sauce, laksa johor sauce, which is a nice soup, rendang daging, the greatest food in the world. So pre-made sauces, I guess it's powder inside or sometimes liquid, a uh, huge section of that. Yeah. Nyonya style. Nyonya style. And they're all about five to seven ringgit, more or less. And so something I believe like 20% of Malaysia's population is Chinese immigrants. And so you'll definitely see that in the supermarket, a lot of Chinese products. And what's great is it's not like Chinese food or Malay food. It really is just Malaysian food. There's sort of a fusion happening. Yes, yes. The ingredients and the flavors and the sauces. Of course. And so it wouldn't be a Malaysian supermarket tour without talking about Maggie. <laughs> Maggie is instant noodles. If you guys remember from the Indonesian supermarket tour, this is the Malaysian version of Indomie. Right. Now, yes. don't ask Ivana and I which one's better, on. Indomie or Maggie, because we are in the wrong country for that opinion. But it's something like five to ten ringgit per pack. It's more or less the craft dinner of the area. Right. Do you know what this means? This, means, you to try this. this means crazy spicy. Yes. I will not be eating this one. Look at the fire. Jeez. They got fire on the pack. They've got so many flavors. Aglio flavors. Olio. Even Aglio olio. This is uh, spicy and fish. Chili a la campung. Tons of different flavors. Tom yam, Tom yam of course. Yeah. And is there even an original? I think I think the original was just probably just chicken. Onion. Just chicken flavor was the original. Yes. But this is a, a staple food in Malaysia. I believe Maggie is not Malaysian, but it's Malaysian. You know? Got it, got it. <laughs> now, introducing another Malaysian staple called Milo. I believe it's more of an Australian product, although maybe it was purchased by Nestle recently. Uh, in the end, it's just a powder you put in water yes. to make chocolate water. Right. Somehow they've got it branded as like active, go, vitamins and minerals. Realistically, it's just sugar. Oh, I think it has susu, which is milk. Oh, it has susu now. Maybe they're upgrading and this one even says less sugar. So maybe they're trying to uh, rebrand into a Gatorade type thing. Yeah. Uh, but this is a common ingredient. You'll even have it like in a restaurant, they'll serve like Milo, Milo dinosaur, yes. or roti Milo. Yes. It's like bread and, and chocolate powder. Yeah. Uh, in seems like in Malaysia, it's Maggie and Milo, every household. Everyone. Born and raised, all the kids. Yes. Maggie and Milo. <laughs> All right, so we've made it to the snack section, and at least on this particular aisle, everything is familiar brands at familiar prices. Maybe a little bit more expensive because of the import, but it's Snickers and Chips Ahoy and things that I recognize. Now, we will make a video, coming soon, trying all different Malaysian Ooh. snacks. If you know the Malaysian snacks, let us know. What should we try? What should we try? We will try 10 or 15 or 20 in one video. That's right. We've done this in many countries. They're quite popular videos. So let us know what Malaysian snacks to try, considering it's going to be a Malaysian product, not Oreos. <laughs> let us know. All right. Next up, one of my favorite sections in any supermarket tour, the Lay's chip flavors. First of all, it's about 15 ringgit a bag, full size. So fairly fair pricing. They got the classic. They got the spicy flavor in a pink packaging, something interesting. Hot and spicy right beside spicy flavor. Uh, what's the difference here, I wonder? Not sure. Ketchup. They have Lay's ketchup, but this is a different packaging. I think this is not what we have in Canada. As you guys know, in Canada, number one chip flavor, ketchup, Lay's. Ketchups. But this is a maybe different thing, although on the right track. Uh, chili lime, barbecue, salt and vinegar, all familiar. Salted egg. Now this, this is something right here. What's and that one say? Seaweed. And Nori. seaweed. This is uh, quite common uh, Asian flavors. Seaweed and salted egg. You guys know me, I love chips <laughs> and both of these flavors would be off my palate. If you've never tried salted egg, uh, I like salty to be honest, but it's so salty that it tastes like fish. Now people think I'm crazy when I say that, but salted egg is so salty that it's like, it's like too much. I'm still learning the ways of the salted egg. Believe it or not, I'm very curious of how it tastes, so Take I'm going to get it. Take it home, Ivana. <laughs> Go for it. And I will say this. Malaysia is one of the only countries so far that has a chip section nearly as big as in Canada. 
it seems like Malaysians are chip like people because uh, four, five, six, seven bays full of chips. Uh, not as big as Canada, where it's seven bays on both sides. But still, one of the biggest uh, chip sections we've seen outside of North America. By the way, I love this. Oh, this is not this good. This is from Thailand. This is not good. I like it. This is the Big Bang. It's, uh, it's seaweed sheets. I mean, it doesn't even sound good. Sheets of seaweed. Oh, so gosh. The and flavor. Healthier than chips. It might be healthier than chips, but the flavor is not right. Good. It's healthier and cheaper than chips, but it's just like crispy ocean water. No way. It's so good. <laughs> you gotta retry it. Oh my goodness. Salted egg fish skin. <laughs> Whoa, ho, Nasi Lamak chips. So guys, like I told you, Nasi Lamak is rice cooked in coconut mm -hmm. milk with some, maybe some sambal and an egg or something right, like that. Right. It's a national dish. It sounds simple and it is simply delicious. Uh, national dish here in Malaysia. So Nasi Lamak chips, I mean, interesting, <laughs> interesting to say the least. Now, another staple food here in Malaysia is rice. They tend to eat rice with every meal, sometimes including breakfast which I'm still halfway in on eating rice for breakfast. I'm choosing because there are so many selections. True. You like, want which one should I buy? A lot of different rice options. And what's totally unique that I've never seen before, they've got ketupat rice, which is rice that's been sort of compressed into these little containers, as well as lamang, which typically is cooked in bamboo, but they've got some sort of plastic packaging, which I guess gives it bamboo flavor and that sort of shape, as well as nasi lamak, which is rice that's been cooked in coconut water. So this must be some sort of coconutty rice. Uh, the list goes on. So not only rice for sale, but rice in different uh, shapes and sort of preparations. Yeah, that's right. Now there isn't much of a coffee culture in Malaysia. I guess in KL, you'll see a lot of nice coffee shops, but outside of the big city, you won't see as many uh, coffee shops. But that being said, they do love the instant coffee. So Nestle, Nescafe 3-in-1, very common, as well as, this is from Ipo, I believe, called yeah. Old Town White Coffee. It's basically instant coffee with, uh, yeah, 3-in-1. So it's got the sugar as well as the powdered milk inside. Yes. In terms of good quality fresh coffee, they do have a small selection over there with some Brazilian and some imported. And believe it or not, we're going with Indonesian coffee. Yeah. It's not instant and it's pretty good and it's cheap. Cheapest one on the shelf, yeah. so what the heck, we go for it. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, I'm not a big fan of instant coffee. I'm a bit of a coffee snob. Not a full snob, but I want some real beans, freshly yeah, grinded. This is good for you. Yeah, this is good. Now, I think Malaysians are drinking more tea than coffee. I'm not sure if it's 100% true, so. but I know they have tea time from the formerly British era. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more of a tea culture than coffee. For sure, they sell Cameron Highlands tea. This is an area in Malaysia where they grow their own tea and 13 ringgit for 500 grams, I think is a pretty decent price. And in true Malaysian fashion, three in one. So Te Tarek means pulled tea. This is a milk tea latte. It'll be sugar and tea and milk powder. Uh, three in one, three in one, three in one. They like their instant tea and instant coffee in Malaysia. Yes. They really do. <laughs> Oh, check it out. This is a hit in uh, in Romania. Seven days croissant for one ring at 70. I think that's the most affordable oh. seven days croissant you're going to find. Cheap. It's cheap, right? It's cheaper than Romania. Oh, the Romanians will love coming to Malaysia. They'll be eating seven days croissant yeah, breakfast, no, lunch, and right dinner. At home, yeah. Right at home, yeah. <laughs> now, in terms of bread, for sure, gardenia has many different varieties, and it's usually one of the most common and one of the most cheapest. But for some reason, there's no price in this whole section. Oh, maybe here. Okay, four... 30 ring it for a loaf of bread. Well, these ones are all, maybe they're all the same price. Is that the idea? This one is the classic jumbo. Classic jumbo. That's gotta be the cheapest one for 430. That's gotta be the wonder bread equivalent here in Malaysia. Yes. yes. About an American dollar per loaf. So it seems like Malaysia is up there with Canada with the amount of potato chips, as well as the amount of frozen and therefore processed food. A lot of countries we've been to don't have this huge 
frozen food section. <laughs> I mean, no criticism to Malaysia because Canada is up at the top of the list as most processed food. Right. But this is something very familiar to me. Uh, yes. Rows and rows of uh, frozen pizza, frozen chicken wings, frozen burgers, of course, Ramly. Oh. Of course, the Ramly burger, famous yes. in Malaysia. Ho oh, ho, check it out. Coca-Cola, actually cheaper than Pepsi by 10 cents. I tell you what, guys, if you're someone who prefers Pepsi, let me know in the comments. I've never met someone who thinks Pepsi is better than Coke. Coca-Cola is clearly better. Yes. For it to be better and cheaper, how could you justify <laughs> buying Pepsi in Malaysia? Now, with that being said, we have this drink here, which is uh, 100 plus. This is like Gatorade, but very Malaysian. You got the lemon, you got the zero sugar, and you got the original. Uh, kind of a good flavor. What would you describe the flavor 100 plus? It's sort of unique. It's not really fruity. It's not really anything. It's just a 100 plus flavor. Refreshing refreshing yeah. and it's the most popular uh gatorade type drink sports drink and it's uh distinctly malaysian and i guess we'll end off today's video on the non-halal section which is sort of behind doors in the back of the uh back of the store here let's uh let's check it out so Malaysia will satisfy all of your alcohol needs from beer to wine to spirits, although there is a tax on alcohol. So Carlsberg is for sure the most common beer that we've seen, and it's gonna be 40 ringgit for a six pack. Not too bad, but there is a tax on it. Hmm. Now in terms of wine, I don't know much about wine brands to know which one would be an average price, uh, but it seems like it's something like 80, to 100 or 120 ringgit for a bottle of wine on average. Right. Now, in terms of spirits, for example, it's 176 ringgit for a 26er of Captain Morgan Spiced. I think that's about an average price uh, spirit. But again, I'm a beer guy, so I don't know much about wine and spirits. All right, so final review of the Malaysian supermarket. We spent 130 ringgit, and just before I leave, some beautiful decorations at the front, which I forgot to mention on the way in. Uh, quite a nice ceiling in the Malaysian supermarket. Now, I was really blown away by some of the prices in the fruit section. 175 ringgit for five peaches. I'm not sure what's happening with that. That's never before seen. And other than that, it was pretty familiar. Huge processed food section, huge chip section, mm -hmm. some familiar prices overall yeah. for a Canadian. Yeah, I get uh, everything I want then. And so we stocked up on a whole lot of groceries because we're staying here for a month and Ivana's gonna be cooking. <laughs> so let's go home and make dinner. Thanks for watching everybody.